Welcome to the Western Financials Expense Reimbursement Module. Today, we'll demonstrate how to create an expense report. We'll begin by logging into Western Financials and Grants and clicking on the Expense Reimbursement tile to open the Expense Reimbursement Dashboard. To create an expense report, open the Expense Reports tile then click on the Create Expense Report button. Start by completing the General Information section. This section is also known as the header. Select the business purpose from the drop down menu. Then enter an applicable description in the description field. Next, select the default location. This should be the location where most of our purchases were made. We can update the location on a particular line if needed in the expense details section below as well. If desired, add a reference for internal purposes, though please note this field is not mandatory. Over to the right, is the Add Header Attachment section, where you can add attachments of any type related to your expense. Attachment types include PDF, Image, Word, Excel, etc. Please note, you can add attachments to a particular expense line when we start entering our receipts in the Expense Details section below as well. Next, enter the default speed code to charge your expenses by clicking on the link. Use the speed code where all or most of your purchases will be charged. We can update the speed code on a particular expense line if needed in the expense details section below. Entering the speed code will automatically populate the fund, department, and program or project chart fields. Click the Done button in the top right corner to close. If you are unsure where your expenses are to be charged, please contact the financial or administrative officer in your department. Now that we've entered our header information, let's move on to the expense details section below. To add an expense line to our report, click on the Add Expense button. When on the expense entry page, Start by entering the receipt date by clicking on the calendar icon on the right side of the date field. Next, select the expense type that best describes your receipt by clicking on the magnifying glass icon on the expense type field. Select the expense type from the frequently used tab or search all expense types in the all types tab. We can also search by typing in the search field. The expense detail fields will populate based on the expense type you select. In this example, we selected airfare, Canada to Canada slash US. As we can see, the additional information area below has populated a field for originating location and for ticket number. If we were to change the expense type to accommodation hotel, We can now see that the originating location and ticket number fields have disappeared from the additional information area 
as they are no longer relevant to our newly selected expense type. Now that we have our date and expense type selected, we must complete all required fields as noted by the asterisk. Next, we can attach our receipt or supporting documentation by clicking on the Attach Line Receipt link located in the Additional Information section at the bottom of your expense entry page. Now that the Attach Line Receipt link is open, start by clicking the Add Attachment button. Then click on My Device then select your attachment. Once we've selected our attachment, click on the upload button, then press done in the top right corner. You'll then want to enter a relevant description of your receipt. Then click on the Done button in the top right corner. We have now attached a line receipt. Right below the Attach Line Receipt link is the Update Line Speed Code Account link. Clicking on the Update Line Speed Code Account link allows you to update the speed code for a particular expense line if a particular receipt will be charged somewhere other than the default entered on the expense report header. To add additional expense entries, click on the Add button and enter your expense details. In this example, we will choose meal breakfast as our new expense line. Our report now includes two expense lines. To remove a line, select the applicable expense line and click the delete button. When prompted, click yes to delete or no to go back. You can also filter your expense lines by clicking on the filter button. Filter options include date, type, description, errors, attachments, and exceptions. Once you've entered all of your expense lines, you are now ready to review and submit your expense report. But before we do, be sure to click on the Save button located on the top right corner to review your expense entry lines for errors. Please note, you will not be able to submit your report until all errors are corrected. As we can see here, the system will flag errors in red. In this example, we forgot to enter a description. To correct the error, please complete the description box below.
anytime you correct an error, be sure to click on the save button to ensure that it has been truly addressed. Once we can confirm all errors have been addressed, click on the review and submit button. On the expense summary page, add any additional information or documentation required for research purposes in the notes and research documentation link. Click the link to open. When in the notes and research documentation link, click on the add notes button to add your note. We have now added our note and can click on the done button in the top right corner to close. When you're ready, click submit to route your claim for approval and processing. When prompted, review the submission confirmation and click submit when ready. Now that our report is submitted, we've been redirected to the Expense Reports module, where we can click Refresh to see the status of our report in the Awaiting Approval section. We can also now see the individual our report is awaiting the approval of. This concludes our demonstration on how to submit an expense reimbursement. Until next time.